of Senegal's uh, opposition candidate is set to become president after his main uh, opposition, uh, his main opponent, recognised his election victory. Senegal's uh, governing coalition candidate, Amadou Ba, has congratulated opposition candidate Basrou Jomaifai on winning the first round of presidential elections. Preliminary results indicate he won more than 50% of the vote, which would eliminate the need for a runoff. The Dakar Appeals Court says full official results are expected to be announced on Friday. Journalist Awa Bakala joins us from Dakar. Welcome to DW. This seems like a quick and gracious acceptance of defeat by the ruling party. Is that the normal way of Senegalese politics? It's not the normal way, but it's a fair play way. Uh, it's pretty much, um, it's, it's based well, based on the preliminary results, as you just said, a few hours ago, the candidates of the ruling party, Amadouba, conceded the victory to Jumai Fai and the president of uh, the Senegal as well. So usually the protocol is to wait a little bit uh, by the end of the week. If the election committee confirms the result and the polls, uh, it is due for tomorrow or maybe Wednesday. And once the constitutional court uh, has the result and validate the result, Usually, the other candidates have 72 hours to appeal, um, and uh, if not, like you, like the pres president is officially elected, and uh, the swearing is expected uh, to happen on April 2nd. But it's actually the first time of the history that an opponent wins um, potentially uh, on the first runoff, which is very interesting. So this is very pretty much fair play. Yeah, so not just the, 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 the fact that um, an, op an opposition uh, candidate won, but in such a crowded field of, I think, 17 uh, candidates. That seems like a remarkable achievement. What do you think was behind this push for change? Well, you may know that there is many, many young Senegalese who have tried to, in this recent years to reach Europe for a better life and a better perspective. That is the despair, the social despair or the frustration that drove many young people yesterday to vote for change. I have sincerely uh, rarely seen such enthusiasm from the the young the youngsters uh, to to participate to um, to uh, uh, the poll and as the candidates spent time in jail as well it was perceived as something unfair without being sentenced and he symbolized this unfairness and the unfair treatment of the youth by the police but also by the justice and uh, he's been detained in detention like 10 days ago which is um, which is very um, important so this frustration was very like it was it was um, it was very like um it was uh, next to the poll, like it was really recent, re recent, recent. Sorry. Right. So the eagerness for change was still there, and uh, and yeah. So and, and the candidate also is 44 years old, so he's still very young, and he's in phase with uh, what the youngster wants, which is a better future. And and so it was. You think it was the the youth count that 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 carried him because once he gets in, he'll have to deliver. Can you repeat that question? Sorry, you break up. You, you think it was the youth vote that carried him. And I just wonder about uh, the, the people get in on youth votes because they are then very, very impatient to see their, uh, their faith uh, rewarded. Absolutely, but the, th the thing is that when I've been speaking to people yesterday or while they were celebrating this victory, they were also very aware that they need to be extremely patient because there is a lots of um, uh, topics to, to deal with, such as healthcare, education, student loans, um, and also um, the unemployment youth. Um, so they are very aware that it's not going to be fixed by this year. So they are they are very aware of all the all the work that is um, left to do for such a young uh, president. And 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 yeah. <laughs> Chris Ogun Modadai covers Senegalese politics and joins us from Dhaka. You've called this election Senegal's moment of truth. Why? Because it's, first of all, it's the first election they've had in which a, an incumbent president will not be on the ballot. You know, they've had four presidents since 1960, and this will be the first sort of 
um, transitional election in that sense of a president not being on the ballot. But more importantly, they've had a very tense run up to the vote where the president has, you know, faced accusations of trying to seek a third term against the constitution that caused lots of protests. There have also been accusations against him of trying to eliminate potential rivals who may be a threat either to him or his party. And then, of course, uh, uh, last month, there was the postponement of the election, um, which the Constitutional Council in Senegal said was uh, against the law, and that sort of forced the shortened campaign and election. So all of the combination of factors, plus the very difficult economic times in which Senegalese find themselves, is why I called it a moment of truth. So how big of an upset, if you can call it that, would an opposition win be? Uh, some, it's somewhat of a, of a big deal, but also pretty routine in this, at the same time. I, I will start with the, uh, making it a big deal. It's given the conditions I just described. You know, you've had the president allegedly try to seek a third term, uh, sort of uh, been accused of trying to outwit his political rivals, everything that's happened with the protest over the last three years, including most recently where at least four protesters were killed and many more were injured. That would be a big deal in spite of everything we've seen in the last three years, um, in spite of, frankly, the good macroeconomic conditions on paper. You know, one would have thought that the incumbent um, party would win. So it would be a big deal in that sense. At the same time, Senegal is a country that has seen uh, three different occasions uh, an opposition candidate lose. You had um, Abdoulaye Wad in 2000, you had incumbent President Macky Sall in 2012, and should this hold up, as everyone thinks, fire in 2024. So it's pretty routine in Senegal for incum incumbent parties to lose elections. So there, it depends on how you look at it. There are things to pull out of both sides. Okay, Chris, thank you very much for your insights from Dakar there.